Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video was inspired by one of my favorite people here on YouTube, that's Caitlin Pawlowski. A couple of months ago, she did like sort of a dive into a couple of bags in her collection. Just looked at what she paid for them versus their current resale, resale prices and how that lines up. I thought this was a fabulous idea for a video, so I decided to do one myself. I will leave hers linked down below. She did a great job with it. Um, but there are definitely a couple of differences between her collection and mine. Uh, to start off with, uh, I'm going to be in US dollars. Um, she lives in Australia. But the main, most important difference uh, is that I shop almost exclusively on the pre-loved market. To mention the retail prices um, that these bags were when they were purchased, but um, I'm also mostly going to be mostly going to be talking about what I paid for them versus what they're worth today. So some of them definitely fared better than others as far as like the value that they retained. Um, but I just think this is a really interesting exercise. If you haven't done this, I do suggest like looking into some of the bags uh, that are in your wardrobe and like comparing them to what they would sell for today. These are ones that I've had for kind of a while. So it's really interesting to see the differences. So I specialize in the luxury resale market. That's what my whole channel is all about. Uh, comment down below if you have any out of your collection that you would like to share the differences between when you bought them versus today. And also if you bought them pre-loved or not, because that is definitely relevant. And because I work in the pre-loved industry, this is literally what I do every day at my day job. Um, I'm going to include some other ones that I do not have in my collection just as like, you know, sort of like mile markers as to what's to be expected. You guys know that this channel does not believe that handbags are reliable. Financial investments um, do not use money that you need to recoup to buy bags. Flipping bags is not, it's not really a thing, especially on the consumer end. Uh, who's, as someone who's done this every day of my life for, you know, the last six or seven years, I, when I am buying a bag, um, I am not thinking about the potential for resale value. That is just not a, 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 a computation that goes through my mind. I only buy things that I think I will love and that I think I will be able to incorporate into my wardrobe and lifestyle. Point blank, period, the end. Handbags are not reliable financial investments. Hey guys, um, this is Catherine from the future. I guess it's still the past when you see this, but um, I just did want to cut in here because I'm re-watching this video and I think there's one point that I definitely missed. Um, I'm going to be talking about a lot of the like um, anticipated re current resale values of a lot of a couple of the items that are currently in my wardrobe and I'm going to be talking about like the prices that I expect them to go for. Um, now you're going to notice that a lot of them are very close to the prices that I paid and I make men and I make reference to that a couple of times. One thing that I did forget to mention because um, it is second nature to me because I do this for a living, but I need you guys to remember that there are costs associated with selling your items, whether they be uh, shipping and packing materials, shipping fees, um, transaction fees, uh, fees from using platforms or 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 um, or consignment services. Uh, there are, there are just fees and responsibilities that are attached to um, selling your items and that is going to cut in to that expected price it ends up in your pocket in like at the end of the transaction in real life the, the selling price for an item is not the amount that goes into your pocket that is one of the main factors at play besides just general demand why people tend to not make money um, reselling their bags when it actually comes down comes down to the nuts and bolts so somehow I missed that in the original filming in the original filming of this video but I really Really can't um, stress enough that handbags are not reliable financial investments and um, it's re you're really better off um, you're really better off with your expectations um, remaining at being able to buy enjoy and use a bag and then move on from it um, move on from it when the time comes so that is just something really important to remember um, when I say later in the video that I carried a bag for free um, it's kind of a round figure. It's definitely, I definitely view these as, I, I view some bags as better buys than others because of um, the amount of money that I put in versus the amount of money that I get out of it once I am, you know, ready to move on. If that ever happens, um, it's also really important that you, a bag has no resale value unless you actually sell it, which most of the ones in my collection I have no, I have no sights on getting, getting rid of anytime soon. So once again, Handbags are not reliable financial investments. This will be of, of no surprise to you that 
I had to come back in here and make this point. If you've watched me uh, a lot over the past couple of years, but if for any of you who are new here, um, I have tons of info about the pre-love market. Definitely, I'll leave some of my best and favorite videos uh, link down below, and I'll obviously have more to come. But now, we're gonna get back to the video. So the first bag we're gonna talk about is the Gucci Dionysus. So when I bought this bag in 2017, it retailed for $23.90. Now what's really interesting about this is that when I bought it on Fashion File, I used their layaway option. We're able to pay it off over the course of two months. Within that two months, the retail price increased by $100 to $24.90 plus tax. Um, today, I would pay for this bag $2,835.50. Uh, $2, and, um, and what I paid for it in 2017 on the resale market, brand new, was $1,975. Uh, so that's about $860 in savings. So the current value of these, it really varies because to be honest, there aren't a lot of them out there on the market. I don't know, the medium is not one that I really see out there on the resale market that often but when I do see them especially in this size in this colorway what you'll notice is that it has this pocket here in the back uh, these tend to get color transfer and, and it maybe may look like I have some as well but it's kind of hard to see um, so they tend to sell anywhere from from eighteen hundred to twenty two hundred dollars. I think that is due to there just not being a whole bunch of them out there. The bag is generally pretty hard wearing, um, as long as you really aren't worried too much about that back pocket. It's kind of it's kind of inevitable. Also, these smaller sizes, which are even which I think you find even less on the on the resale market, they don't have uh, the back pocket at all, so there is no uh, risk of color transfer. Uh, also, I think one thing to take into account why this bag has lasted is um, the neutral color and the fact that it's like just ostentatious enough. It says Gucci all over it, but I feel like it doesn't scream it the way like some of the, some of the things that they have made over, over the years. It's a classic style, it uses neutral colors, and, and it's pretty hard wearing, sturdy, and doesn't have any like structure loss or any like undo like condition notes, as long as we take this not into account. Huge caveat right here. In my opinion would sell for approximately what I bought it for. I will say though that when I bought it in 1975, that was the lowest price I had seen them uh, sell for at the time. Um, some of the ones in worse condition, however, you might see selling around the 1600 mark, but that but those are the ones that are like kind of thrashed. Um, in this condition, I think it would sell for around the same price that I paid for it. We're gonna call this one, not a good investment, we're gonna call this one a good buy. Next up from my collection is the Louis Vuitton Belmont. This is a bag that was made from between 2013 and 2016. So in 2013, when this bag was released, uh, it retailed for $2,110. It is a canvas bag, but it uses a, um, a leather that is upgraded. It's called Nomad Leather. It's not the Bichetta leather that they use. Um, I just really liked it because uh, I thought the color was really unique and different, and I really like the Damier Ben print. I purchased this bag um, in 2015 for $13.95 on the pre-love market from Fashion File. It didn't really have any wear or anything to speak of. Um, you'll notice that this bag did not, not sell for close to its retail value. Back then the bags weren't really um, holding their resale value because this is also before they started to discontinue and, and move away from canvas. So with the current value of these, you'll find them, you'll find them listed online anywhere from 1900 on the high end to about like 1100 on the lower end and that's definitely going to um, depend on the condition. One thing that's really important to know about this bag is that the bags in this shape in the canvas, they do tend to like sort of like like smush inwards towards the corners like if it's not cared for well and if you honestly if you carry it using the shoulder strap then you're really setting yourself up for disaster in the future so that is one reason why some of them will be priced so much lower than others however i bought it at 13.95 which fun fact because we're going to talk about the neverfull later that was the exact retail price of the neverfull at the time so i ended up choosing this one instead for roughly the same price but another really important thing to know is that um the, the louis vuitton does Damier a Ben print isn't, isn't as popular as it once was. Since they have drastically slowed production of canvas, um, they were mainly focusing on the monogram and the monogram bags are the ones that are more popular. Main takeaways on the Belmont, I'm gonna say very little change in value. I, I would say that I would be able to sell this for very, very close to what I paid for it, but that is because I bought it resale. So that just goes to show you when you buy, when you shop right and care for your things, 
when it does come time for you to sell them on, like it's almost like you're carrying them for free. Um, there was a time where this was the most Googled bag on the internet, the Givenchy Antigona. I have it here in the mini size in the black shiny leather. Um, this is called box leather. And so the retail price for the Givenchy Antigona in this size is $18.50. Now, I just had to do a whole update of my, uh, my little sheet here. And this is the only bag that I'm gonna talk about today that has not had a price increase a since I wrote out all of my info and B <laughs> and B uh, since 2018 roughly so um, this is the only one that is still currently available that is the same price as it was three or four years ago so that I think that's very very interesting this one I bought in winter of 2018 um, this one I purchased once again on the pre-love market in wonderful excellent condition for $1,215 but I have to caveat and say that that was a lot lower than the market value for this bag at the time. Um, I got a deal on this bag when I bought it. Usually they tended to go, they tended to go for like 14 to 1500. Uh, these in certain colors are going for like 900. Um, and they also come in like a, dr like a, a drummed leather as well. But this color in the style with this leather in this condition, you could, I would potentially see these going anywhere from like, um, I would say 13 to anywhere from like 13 to 15. Um, so takeaway, no real change value wise over the last couple of years from when I purchased this beautiful bag. So I have a treat for you guys. We are going to do a vintage. Where do we start with vintage bags and their values? I bought this bag on eBay last year. So this came with its Neiman Mark, this original Neiman Marcus tag. In here it says $250 um, from June of 1990. So this is a birth year bag for me. I was born in 1990. This bag retailed for $250 back then. Fast forward about 30 years. Um, I purchased this bag on eBay for $258. <laughs> I would say that I got a really good deal on this one. Typically on most of the platforms and websites you would find this, you would find some this or something like this in this relative condition for maybe anywhere from like 400, maybe up to $500. I was able to get this bag for $250 on eBay because not only am I an expert in authentication, uh, I also have no life. <laughs> Realistically, you could expect to find something like this in this condition for like anywhere from $400 to maybe $550. Honestly, if the lining were in better shape, something like this could sell for $750. Outside, it looks really nice, and but the you know interior lining is flaking a bit because of the age of the bag. So currently, Fendi isn't making anything like this. But um, what I will say is that the, the shopper totes that they are making now are you know, 2,600 approaching $3,000. So that's like a 10 times, 10 times the price that they were going for that, that this went for in 1990 is what they, is what Fendi bags are in, in canvas even are selling for today in 2022. Big way for this one is that, you know, this is a 30 year old bag and it did, it has maintained its initial value from Neiman Marcus 30, 30 plus years ago. Only time will tell if any of the other bags will will make it and make it to this. I don't know that let's say the uh, Antigona in 2050, I guess, <laughs> is gonna be $18,000 or whatever. Okay, I've done pretty well with most of these bags here. This one, not gonna be so much. This is the Tom Ford Mini Jennifer bag. Talked about it at length. Over the course of many, many years, I bought this bag in 2015 from the Real Real for $900 plus tax. Um, this bag retailed for about $1,900, so I got it at about half price, half price off of retail. This size is no longer in production, but they are still making um, this style in a larger size that's similar. That one is retailing for about $2,850. That's sort of like in line from what it was going for um, back when I purchased this one. Um, so I would say that if this were, it's it's hard to exactly do the math on this, but if this were to still be like, still, still be made today, um, it doesn't seem like Tom Ford's handbag prices have increased all that much in the last 
five or so years. These are now selling anywhere from seven to $1,400 depending on the size. While I love it, I adore it, this was never one that was very popular. Um, there were not a lot of them made and there aren't a whole lot out there. You're more likely to see the medium and larger sizes. Like the medium size today is still made and it actually has a, um, a really cool top handle. It's a bit wider and it's a bit like wider proportionally as well. So it's kind of a different bag. So while there is scarcity for this bag that doesn't necessarily that isn't necessarily going to translate into like you know increase in value because there this just wasn't a very popular bag and it never really made it to the, the upper echelons of like most highly coveted designer bags out there I love it. I would never sell it. Um, if I were to sell this, I'd probably struggle to. It's just not one that people are out, out there searching for. Um, so I would probably struggle to sell this, but it would probably end up selling for anywhere from like five to $700. And that is like a meteoric fall <laughs> from what I purchased, for, purchased it for initially, even on the resale market. Um, retail on this one was about about two thousand dollars and you know I'd be lucky honestly if I were to sell it for like 600 today so now to have some fun uh, I'm gonna go for a couple of bags that a couple of very popular bags that are not in my collection uh, we're gonna I did a little bit of like history and digging see what I can find out there about uh, some very popular bags that may be in your collection so first up I have the Louis Vuitton classic speedy ha has been in circulation since the 30s, I think, the 1930s. So we're almost coming up on 100 years of the Speedy, if you can believe that. So, you know, pricing and everything is gonna be a little bit difficult for, you know, once you get like outside of like the last 15 or 15 to 20 years. Um, but I was watching an episode of Mixish last last year. That is the spin off show of Blackish that uh, details of Rainbow, the, the, the wife and the mom on the show Blackish, what her, you know, existence was like as a biracial person in the 1980s. Lots of nostalgia there I can't recommend the show highly enough but uh, there's one episode where Rainbow's mom um, buys a Louis Vuitton Speedy in 1986. The whole episode was about her wringing her hands about spending $150. Also I need us to take a moment and appreciate this. I have so far been able to like tentatively confirm that to be true. I just did a little bit of research and the current retail price of the Classic Speedy in the size 30 in monogram canvas is $1,370. By the way, the updated bandolier style in the same size um, is $1,740. So when I first started getting into luxury, I think the, Louis, the, the Classic Speedy cost around like maybe I want to say maybe like $800 so it's kind of wild to me to see that in just six or seven years the price has all but doubled. You will definitely though um, when it comes to vintage ones especially in the classic size there are so they are in abundance out there on the market in a you know a variety of different conditions. I would generally say that if you were looking for a classic size speedy um, you'd probably look to spend about maybe four to five hundred obviously depending on the condition although they're not so popular in this moment it is one that has held its popularity for now generations so um that's definitely something to take into account although although if you are gonna buy one new i would say don't go for the classic if you're gonna buy classic go vintage if you're gonna buy a new one um go for the updated bandolier with the strap so regarding the resale market since in the last few years they have like slowed down production of canvas pieces speedies are a lot harder to find so if you do find the bandolier in monogram or in the canvases they are going to go very 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 close to retail but that's if you're getting the bandolier size exclusively there just aren't so many of them out there anymore and even though once again like I said they're not so so popular there aren't people you know rushing out to buy them in droves they're just not a whole lot of them out there now while I don't think they're gonna go over retail I do think that they would sell close to their current retail price so if you were to have bought one a, a bandolier maybe five years ago I think that they were maybe about twelve or thirteen hundred dollars for the bandolier um, today you would probably be able to sell it if it's in really good condition for about what you paid for it so that one not again not an investment but a pretty good buy so we can't talk about meteoric rises in value and not 
get into the Dior saddlebag. The Dior saddlebag was first created in the late 90s, early 2000s um, in the monogram canvas. I, I was able to find that the retail on the Dior saddlebag in 2006 was about $790. That was probably when they began to wane in popularity. Um, again, that, this was way before my time in being like a purveyor of luxury goods. If you were into luxury back then, let me know in the comments below like when you started noticing the Dior saddlebag bags start to fall out of favor um, but what I do know is like fast forward to 2015 when I was starting to get into this business crickets <laughs> I literally tried to sell the Dior saddlebag for a hundred dollars at for and then an additional 40% off and I couldn't I could not I literally couldn't give it away but they were revamped and re-released. So by 2018, the market for them exploded. The retail price, once they were re-released, was you know close to $3,000, which is kind of where they sit at the moment. I wanna say that now they're going for about 3,200 in the canvas. And on the resale market, the vintage ones, um, for a while they were like going up and up and up above $2,000. Now I think the vintage ones have tapered off to now where they're kind of selling at like, anywhere from like 1200 to 1700 depending so the celine luggage line uh those were a sensation starting in 2010 i think that to be honest they rose to like the apex of their popularity right around the time that i got into this business in 2014. um so at that time they were selling like above and at retail people were super into like collecting them and all of the colors um and like dissecting the different colors and like there was a whole cult following around this bag it was one that everyone needed to have now i am if i can find the original price of this bag i will leave that link down below so long as i have been you know in the in the mix with luxury it's been around the same um when i started it was pro the mini size was probably around 2900 which was like crazy expensive at the time and now the mini size is 32 between the era of like 2014 to 2016 these bags were definitely go selling for close to close to the retail price after i want to say like 2017 2018 2017 it was like the lights just turned off for the Celine luggage line. Now, one obvious caveat that I do want to make is that I'm talking about the larger sizes of the bag. That is the micro size, the mini size, and the and the two phantom styles. Uh, those are going to be like the large, huge ones. Uh, currently, the Nano, while it's still very, very popular, they didn't come up on the resale market so, so much um, because people really did wear them and carry them. Even to this day, while I don't, they're not as popular as they once were the people who have them do tend to still love them and i do see them carried and like out and about from time to time um which is nice uh the retail prices on on this one obviously this is one of the newer bags um that we've talked about in today's video prices on this one have sort of been around the same i do remember a time where the nano size of the celine was like 1900 today it's 2700 which while that is probably a really big shift it went from 19 to 24 to 27 i would say like pretty evenly and it's been at the 27 uh, the, the mini sorry the mic the nano has been at the 27 mark for quite a while if you are looking to um sell a larger size of the look of the celine luggage line be prepared to be disappointed because if they sell at all unfortunately they are selling um and obviously this is dependent on condition but they are selling anywhere from like 900 to 1400 if we can even get them out the door to begin with all right so this was so much fun going down memory lane um with my little with my receipts and my history and my like archival uh info i hope you guys enjoyed this as a reminder we don't buy bags for investment that is not the purpose of fashion items handbags are not reliable financial investments we buy things because we love them and they have a purpose in our lives i think it is a good perk to kind of like be able to read the market and see like which which items are better buys than others um but just know that you know losing money when you buy when, when you buy and end up reselling things is kind of just a part of the game and we just have and i think that we just all of us collectively need to do a better job of embracing that.
that. And thanks so much to Caitlin for inspiring me to do this video. Once again, hers will be linked down below. Uh, definitely do go check hers out. Um, so with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please share any 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 of yours from your collection if you want to share uh, the price you paid for it versus what it goes for today um, and how good of a buy some of the items in your collection are. I'd love to hear that. Um, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!